So how many of you here wish that having a baby came with a set of instructions? I've had two babies, and neither came with a how-to manual. So what do you do when a baby comes along without a set of instructions? You start making it up, right? And as you're making up all of these things with this brand new human being in your care, what do you do next? You start telling everyone. You call your family and your friends, and you start telling them all of these crazy, embarrassing, unbelievable things you're doing with this brand new baby. And by doing so, you end up creating your own community. You start creating a positive feedback loop that ends up being your form of life support. So what about those of you who consider yourselves entrepreneurs like Mr. Alexander Graham Bell here? You can read books, you can take courses, you can even earn an MBA. But how many of you, on the day that you launched your business, knew exactly what you were doing? I'm going to guess you were busy making it up. So it's my contention today, or my idea worth spreading, that moms make the best entrepreneurs. Essentially, all moms are entrepreneurs. They're making it up all the time. They're raising children and managing households, often from a young age and sometimes single-handedly. They demonstrate extraordinary talent. And they're also starting their own companies. There are currently 8.1 million women-owned businesses in the US, generating 1.3 trillion in revenues and employing 7.6 million people. And the majority of them, moms. And unlike the usual assumptions, these moms aren't just creating baby products at their kitchen tables. They're also launching their own law firms and their own accounting firms, their own record labels and their own architectural firms, all while raising kids. Now, I know some of you are sitting there going, that's lovely, Jill, that's great. But really, why do moms make the best entrepreneurs. And to illustrate, I'm going to have to take you back to 1995. I was a junior in high school in New Jersey. I was 16, and I was in love with a boy. His name was Eddie. Some of you might know him. He fronts a rock band called Pearl Jam. And uh, at the time, he wasn't really paying very much attention to me. I was doing homework in my room one day, listening to the radio, and on the radio, I heard that Eddie Vedder was going to be inducting Neil Young into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's induction ceremony in New York City. And the best part about this was that the whole thing was going to be taking place at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York City, 20 minutes from where I lived. So of course, I was going to be heading to the Waldorf, sitting outside, waiting for Eddie to walk by, run up to him with a piece of paper, ask him for his autograph, and tell him we'd be getting married soon. And then about 30 seconds after I had that thought, I picked up the phone. And I called the Waldorf, and I asked to be transferred to the person organizing this event. And to this person who picked up the phone, I said, hi, my name is Jill. I am an incredible florist. It just so happens that on the night of your event, I'm offering my services at a discount. Are you looking for any extra florists? And this woman giggled at me, and she hung up the phone. So I called her back. Hi, my name is Jill. I am an unbelievable waitress. It just so happens that on the night of your event, I'm offering my services for free. Are you looking for any extra wait staff? And there was no giggle. She hung up the phone. So I called her back. Hi, my name is Jill. I'm an extraordinary reporter. It just so happens that on the night of your event, my, my um, magazine readers would love to read about this. Uh, how do I get in? And she said, fax a press pass request on letterhead, and we'll be happy to consider you. Here's the fax number. Click. And so I stood in my room, holding that fax number, thinking, what is letterhead? I had no idea. So I ran to my parents, and I said, look, it's a matter of love or death. I really need you to help me figure this out. Can you please help me so I can marry Eddie Vedder? And they said, we understand. So my mom sat down with me at our Apple IIc computer in our kitchen, and uh, she found some really cute clip art that was a, a zipper that underlined words. So all of a sudden, I became the editor-in-chief of Zip Magazine. 
And we made some business cards, we made some letterhead, we worded this press pass request. And uh, I, actually, I watched my mom word this press pass request. We faxed it on in and I went to school the next day and told every single person that I was going to be meeting my future husband in a couple weeks. I get home that same night and, uh, and my dad said, Jill, there's a fax waiting for you in the fax machine. How could rejection come so fast when you've just told everyone you know that you're going to be meeting Eddie Vedder? Not cool, not cool. So I walked over to the fax machine, I picked up the piece of paper, and I read that I had been granted one press pass to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Score, right? Except I completely freaked out completely freaked out, ran up to my mom, and I said, look, I don't understand, how are we gonna get away with this? What do I wear? And she found a really cute black skirt with a zipper on it, and a really cute black purse with a zipper on it. And she made me print out some business cards, she threw me into the brown and blue Oldsmobile station wagon, drove me to the Waldorf, and sat outside waiting for me to get kicked out. <laughs> and uh, I walked in, I flashed one of my newly printed business cards, and I was promptly escorted into the press room for the entire night. I got to ask Al Green what it's like to be Al Green. I got to ask the Almond Brothers what it's like being the Almond Brothers. I had no idea who the Almond Brothers were, but I did get to meet Eddie Vedder. He did not agree to marry me that night. But what does this story illustrate to you? Reason number one, that moms make the best entrepreneurs. We make it up. My mom might not have called herself an entrepreneur through that experience, but what could be more innovative than getting your underage high school teenager into an internationally televised event full of rock stars? <laughs> and she might not even have called herself innovative, which is a fancy word for making it up. But my mom was well-versed in innovative since the day that I was born. And, and watching my mom through that experience, I learned that with each and every company, Anything I would ever do, I would have to make it up each and every time. And I do. Fast forward to 2007. I'm two years into my first business, Paperwork Media, a music management, booking, and publicity firm. I basically sent bands out on tour. And I bring up 07 because this is the year that I had my first baby girl who arrived without an instruction manual. And uh, I, uh, in 2007, when she arrived, she received a gift, a pair of sterling silver anklets with bells on them that I slipped right onto her ankles. And everywhere we went, the parks, the grocery stores, everyone stopped us and said, those are unbelievably beautiful. Wait, is that a tracking device? I totally want one. Where can I get it? And I would have to tell them, yeah, you have to go to Thailand. I got them from someone in Thailand. And soon I got sick of sending people out of the country to go get a pair of anklets. So I thought, why don't I start importing them and I'll have a side business. I turned to my husband, the namologist, and I said, what should we call these? And he said, let's call them Bumble Bells. So we threw up a website, I got the trademark, we started selling them online, and soon they were in retailers all across the country. And about six months into running Bumble Bells, while running my other company, I was having one of those days that we all have. You know those days where you're sitting at your computer and you're typing away? And then the phone rings, so you reach for the phone, but the act of reaching for the phone knocks the baby bottle out of your knee that you were holding into the baby's mouth with your, you know. So you gotta fix that, and then you get back into position, and then the doorbell rings. So you have to run over, who, hoist the baby over your shoulder first. Run over to the front door, sign for the FedEx package, run over to the baby's room, drop the baby on the, it, for a nap in the room, and get back to your computer and finish up your phone call. We've all had those days, right? So on that day, on the phone was my sister-in-law, Rachel, calling from Los Angeles to tell me how Gwen Stefani was doing. She doesn't really know Gwen, but she likes to keep people informed. And on this day, she called very excitedly to tell me that Gwen Stefani's parents had just moved next door to our cousins. Right? Except, wait a second, didn't Gwen just give birth to her second baby, baby Zuma? And wouldn't Baby Zuma look totally cute in a pair of our Bumble Bells? So I sat back, I got in, into position, and while I was on the phone with her, I popped open an email to these cousins, and I said, if I sent you a pair of these Bumble Bells, would you mind walking them next door? And I hit send, 
I finished the call with Rachel. I did about a billion other tasks that day, went off to make dinner for my family, and promptly forgot all about it. And about two months later, I'm back in position, having one of those days, which seems to be every day. And on the phone, it's Rachel again calling. And this time, she says, Jill, have you been to the gossip blog PerezHilton.com today? And I said, only five times this morning, why? She said, you've got to go there right now. So I go over to my computer, I open up the website, and there's the home page, and look, oh, surprise, surprise, it's Gwen Stefani, and there's baby Zuma wearing my bumble bells. Freak out! After the freak out happened, what is a mom entrepreneur to do with this news? Get back into position, call about 400 million people, email about 600 billion people, and try to find somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody at a major publication, because this is a celebrity endorsing my product. So after about 1.5 billion tasks done, April of 2009, Bumble Bells landed People magazine. No small feat for a small business. But what does this story illustrate to you? Reason number two, that moms make the best entrepreneurs. We are expert multitaskers. There's a study out of the Institute of Psychiatry at the University of London that says that your IQ drops 10 points as you're constantly fielding emails and texts and phone calls. It's as though you've lost an entire night of sleep. But what's interesting about the study is that the researchers said that men fared far worse than women because, and I quote the researchers, men have more difficulty multitasking. So you can read book after book about how multitasking sucks and you shouldn't be doing it. it you, you're basically, when you're multitasking, you're trying to achieve more. And you shouldn't want to achieve more. You should be focused on a singular activity because that's all your brain can apparently handle. But today, I want to set the record straight. We mom entrepreneurs are not setting out to achieve more. It's not a choice. If you run a business, and you've had a child somewhere along the way, the simultaneous execution of more than one thing at a time is a must. I multitask, therefore I am. Fast forward to 2009. At this point, I'm running two businesses, and I've had my second baby girl. Also arrived without a how-to manual. And I decided it was high time that I meet another woman who had her own company and had her own kids. In 2009, I didn't know a single one. So I went to meetup.com, and I opened up a meetup, and I invited anyone who self-identified as a mom entrepreneur to come and meet with me for coffee. In my little village, 50,000 people, Oak Park, Illinois. In my first meeting, I was beyond thrilled. Three other women who had companies and had kids showed up. Four of us in one room. Second meeting, the next month, that number doubled. Third meeting, the number tripled. Six months in to this meetup, we had 200 members online. So I kind of figured I was on to something, and I launched business number three. Two years later, we're now the Founding Moms, a collective of meetups for mom entrepreneurs in over 30 cities around the globe, including cities in Canada and Australia. We have thousands of members who each access their city's Founding Moms Exchange, which is what we call these meetups, on their own meetup.com page. So we base our organization on the meetup.com platform, and each city has its own meetup page. You can imagine, with thousands of users, these users sometimes can't log in here, they can't access something there, so they email me with questions. And I didn't design meetup, so uh, I didn't really ever know what to respond to. So I spend most of my day on the meetup.com support page. And they have a brilliant support team, brilliant. They get back to you right away with any question you have, and they always did. They got back to me with each query I sent in. But soon, with so many queries, I started getting real sick and tired of emailing different people the same problems. So at the bottom of my queries, I started asking, uh, would you mind being my one-on-one -on -one contact? And they kept getting back to me with responses to my queries, but no one ever addressed the one-on-one -on -one contact issue. So I gave up, and a couple weeks later, I was sitting at a Founding Moms Exchange in Chicago, and just before the meeting started, I was talking to meetup member Michelle about how much I hated my dentist. And she said, you have got to make an appointment with mine. Mine is fab, you're gonna love her. And I thought, who, who, who talks about their dentist in fab terms? I really have to go and see what this is all about. 
So I made an appointment at the River Forest Dental Group in River Forest, Illinois. And when I walked in, I walked in and I started, you know, filling out that form we all fill out. Name, address, insurance info, how did you hear about us? And I wrote, meetup member Michelle told me you guys were fab, so that's why I'm here. I gave it in, I sat down in the waiting room, and one minute later, a dentist walks out behind the counter, holding my sheet, said nothing but, Jill, I see you heard about us through meetup. What's meetup? And so I launched into this explanation of, you know, this amazing site, you can start these meetup groups, it's incredible. And about five minutes in, because I can talk, I stopped myself and I asked, yeah, why, why are you interested to know? And she said, I am so sorry I didn't introduce myself properly. My name is Dr. Heiferman and I own the River Forest Dental Group. Oh, and my brother started meetup. <laughs> Excuse me? She said, yeah, you know, Scott Heiferman, founder and CEO of meetup.com. Yeah, that's my brother. I said, yeah, you have got to be kidding me. So I whipped out my business card, explained to her that I'm building this organization based on her brother's platform, and could I please, please, please be hooked up with someone for a one-on-one -on -one contact? And so she gave me his email address, and Scott was kind enough to email me for some time. And then at Scott's request, we got on the phone and spent an hour talking about what I needed for my business. And not only that, but a couple months ago, I told him, I'm on my way to New York. Could I stop by, come see you, get a hug for starting this amazing website? And he said, sure, come on by. So I went on by, you can see how happy I was. But not only did I stop by, he invited his entire support staff into the conference room and allowed me to grill them for an hour about what my business needs. And they got to grill me about what Meetup needs. And the best part about this is, see Scott in the back and the left, the woman next to him, Andrea, my one-on-one -on -one contact. I got one. So what does this story illustrate? Reason number three, that moms make the best entrepreneurs. <laughs> we tell our dentists, we tell our family, we tell our friends, we will tell anyone who will listen. The brilliant Malcolm Gladwell said that talking to people is the most useful and efficient way of finding out new and interesting things, and there's no other way to do it. I'm going to add that talking to people is the most useful and efficient way of building your business. Now, you don't have to be a genius, have a stroke of genius, figure out a complex algorithm, or go through an intimidating series of steps to become a mom entrepreneur. If you're busy making it up, which isn't new for any mom, and you're busy multitasking, which isn't a choice for any mom, and you're busy telling everyone what you're doing, which is a need for every mom, then you are a true mom entrepreneur, the best kind of entrepreneur that there is. Thank you.